The reality is that, uh, yeah, that the equipment is only a small part of it. The acoustics in your room are crucial. Uh, I used to live in San Francisco, and a number of years ago, they built Davies Hall, which was where the uh, the San Francisco Symphony played. Mm -hmm. And uh, they spent, I forget, it was like $40 million building this building uh, in the 70s. And they got it, and you know they hired the best acousticians and the best PA people and all of that stuff to get it done right. And they built it, and they put the symphony in there, and they started playing, and it sounded terrible. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, and they, they missed the boat on the acoustics in there. And, so they, and that's so important for a symphony because they're not relying so much on the PA as they are on the room itself. So they spent $11 million redoing it. So if you've built a church and you're you're kind of married to the design that you had in your church, uh, be willing to rethink. It's like writing a song. You have to, you know, you might have written a great song, but, you know, you have to be willing to rethink and tweak and change. And so um, so I, I was in a church once uh, consulting a little bit, and the pastor said, well, no, the acoustics are awesome in our church. <laughs> he said, it's, this church was designed like a Shakespearean playhouse, so you can stand on the stage and talk and without a PA, and it'll sound great. And I said, well, that's awesome. You ought to be doing Shakespeare then, uh. because um, <laughs> yes, the, the, the problem is you've put a band in here with drums and electric guitars, mm -hmm. and you can't understand a, a word that's coming out of anybody's mouth, and, and there it's just noise in the room because it's too live. So you need to tone down the room with some acoustics. So I'm not an acoustician, but um, the reality is you want to, you know, sound is physics, and sound travels through the air. It's waveforms, and it travels through the air. It bounces off of walls, and it reflects, and it goes goes around the room. And, it, and depending on how the room is shaped, what the walls are made out of, the ceiling, the floors, all of that stuff affects how sound interacts with the room. So what you want to do is you want to treat the room with some uh, acoustic treatment, being either absorbers so that sound won't bounce, it'll hit it and stay there, or diffusers so when it does hit it, it diffuses off in a better um, pattern so that it's not um, it's it's not creating feedback and, and weird modes modal things in the room where the frequencies are are aligning with each other and all that kind of weird stuff so so is there um is that an expensive proposition to uh to treat your church uh, acoustically um is it as expensive as a as like uh, putting in the proper pa system right um actually you want to be careful because you can't choose one over the other. Um, mm. Your acoustics is just as important as your PA. If you're if you haven't treated your acoustics well, you're not necessarily going to overcome all those problems with just PA. So, so yes, it can be expensive to do acoustic treatment in your church, but it's but it's it's really necessary. If you have handy guys in your church, there are a, a number of websites where you can go to some D. Um, do-it-yourself kind of websites where you can build different absorbers and things like that. But that's a lot of work, but it's it's worth it. 